Plunkin. Seen the dogs? Where are the dogs? Don't they know it's time to eat? Daylight savings thrown off. Where are the dogs? Buddy, hey, where's your bowl? Buddy, where's your bowl? It's time to eat. Go get your bowl. Go get your bowl. Go find your bowl. Should be back any second. There we go. Good boy, buddy. Good boy. Yes, I will take that. I will take. Okay. I was trying to catch it. Here you go. Do your stretches. I will get you dinner. Good boy, buddy. What's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Look at the. Got some plant mail here to open up. Still waiting on a dog. What is this? I've never. Don't ever have to beg the dog to eat. Toby. Where's Toby? Yeah. Right. Where'd he go? Is he upstairs, buddy? Is he upstairs? Where'd he go? Where's Toby? Can you go get Toby too? You got the ball. Can you go find Toby? That would be really appreciated. I would thank you so much. He's such a good boy. Such a good boy. He's leaving next week. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss... What was that? You talking back? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Indoor voice. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. Happy first day of spring. I was hoping to do like all kinds of fun outdoor things for the video that's coming out on the first day of spring, but this is... This is how it's been all week. Just pretty gloomy, gross, very wet. So I don't know if I'm going to make it out there. I'm probably not. Probably not going to happen, but that's okay. Have all season to do things outside. Did Toby show up yet? <laughs> no, he's not under there because the tortoise stole his spot. I'm going to go ahead and feed you. Toby's just going to have to wait. Snooze you lose, right, buddy? Yeah, that's what I figured. Shook a cup full of food. Toby's going to show up. Okay, you leave him alone. You're not even supposed to be in here. What are you doing? Don't pick on the dog. Hey, be nice. All right, come on. Come on. What? Oh, really? Cosmo, are you going to get up? There we go. Good boy, Cosmo. Not really into the camera either, are you? Give everybody a kiss. Okay. Come on. There you go. You say hi? You say hi to everybody? No? Uh, not in the mood. That's okay. We hadn't gathered yet. No plans this week. The last several vlogs have been pretty regimented, like doing specific tasks. I just kind of figured I'd pick up the camera. We'll go back to the old school vlogs and just do whatever. Walk around, talk, look at some plants, hopefully get to see the pets. Some I've already think that we've covered pretty much everything except for the fish tanks. And I don't know where Pumpkin went. She was here but I'm sure she left because of the ruckus with the birds and the dogs. Got some really exciting developments on one of my orchids over here. Look at the size of that bud. That is a big bud in back here. Let's see if you can see it. It's got another one right there. It's gonna be nice, big, really pink, fragrant blooms. Cannot wait for that to open up. Everything over here is still everything over here. The melanochrysum, somebody asked me about this and I didn't give an update on it. It like threw out a few wonky leaves and then it started to grow normal again. But it's doing okay. It's just went through a, like a weird awkward phase. How did I forget? This is sitting right here. Time to get that opened up. Finally got some new pruners too. Isn't that Toby? Isn't that exciting? Yeah, he didn't care. Pardon me while I sit here under my happy light and bask like a lizard. I told you, taking it easy this week. Very casual. Doing a plant unboxing on the floor. Also, look at this hair. Look at that. Just vacuumed in here yesterday. And like, I'm a thorough vacuumer. Very, very thorough. I'll go over the room sometimes twice. The dog, buddy, I've never seen a dog in my life that sheds as much as this dog. Again, dogs are being weird. I don't think I've ever sat on the floor and not had a dog with me. Well, I guess there is one dog. There's Tucker. He's over there. Don't think we can count that. Oh, there it is. I hear you. I hear him. There he is. Hey, Toby. And there's a buddy and the buddy's going. Okay, no, that's not for you. That's a heat pack. Still warm. Nice and toasty. That feels really nice, actually. So these are so, okay, careful what you wish for. Thank you for joining me, Toby. It's nice to have you. Okay, good buddy's here too. These are plants, they're not for you. I'm gonna go ahead and let him sniff it out and then he can calm down. So these were sent to me from a friend of mine, one of my buddies, Sean, sent this to me. He's down in uh, Alabama and has some pretty cool plants in his collection. He messaged me a while ago asking if he could send me a very special plant and we've just been waiting for the weather to get nice and it looks like he threw some other goodies in here, which I'm really excited about. Okay, don't eat these. Let's make a deal. I'm gonna set this on the floor. You're not allowed to eat them. This is all packaged up very nicely. Very nice, Sean. And there's the star, the crystal. I know that the shadows are really bad from my lizard light up here, but I don't really know what to do about that. I'm trying to get that vitamin D, I'm sorry. This, wow, that is a hefty rhizome, wow. Uh, this is a division from his uh, Hedicium Gardnerium, which are really pretty ginger lilies. They have a yellow bract on them with little 
orange flowers that pop out. One of my favorites, They're really pretty. And very cleverly wrapped. Sean, I bet you're really good at origami. Oh, this is nifty. I'm sure not intended, but I have this in the bag. That's gonna make it easier to get this outside and get it potted up. Wow, that is a very nice, big, thick, healthy plant. That's gonna be a huge clump just from planting this one. I mean, this is a huge clump right here on its own. That's really exciting because I was telling him, um, and I think I may have talked on the channel about this, but the cold spell we had, I am gonna be kind of surprised if my gingers made it through that, you know, several days being in negative temperatures. They've never been through that kind of cold before. I mean, I've had them for like a decade, but still that really seems to be pushing it. So I don't know if I'm gonna have any gingers outside this year other than the roots that I took inside to overwinter. So I have some backups just in case, but this is, this is better than anything I already have. I'm not the cold hardiness, but none of the gingers are listed to be as cold hardy as they usually are, at least with the Hedichiums. So I definitely will be giving that a try and I'm really excited about it. Red dragon, red dragon what? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try and get this opened up here. The shadows and everything. Oh, hoo, hoo. camera, you better get that. I guess I should unwrap it and then you'll be able to see it. There we go. Can you tell what that is? See it? Look at that. That is a beautiful plant, the red dragon. You can see why it's called that, right? One of the bigger ones too, I believe. I have to read up on it, but I'm pretty sure the red dragon is known for having some of the larger traps. I will be putting this under glass so that I don't kill it. I love their moisture. Wow, that is really pretty. Saving the best for last. You might be able to guess what's in here. Look at that. Hey, okay, also an artist. Tempting to hold the camera up with the dog's turtle toy down here. I also just noticed that my wireless mic has been flipping and flopping all over the place, so if the audio's wonky, that's why, and I apologize. Trying to open this one up as delicately as possible because I know that what's in here is a special plant. <laughs> oh, so pretty. Look at that beauty and Thurum Crystallinum. Potted up and looking great. This is a really nice, healthy plant. It's got the new growth on it and still one of its older leaves, which I am cool with. I think that that's actually nice to have as much green on there as possible. Nice, healthy growth from down below. And this, feel I can feel it. And the pot has that nice weight to it. You know how when you pick up a pot and you can tell that the plant's rooted in doing well and it's an established plant, not just a cutting that's been jammed into some soil. But I know Sean wouldn't do that, but I'm just saying, you know, with plants in general, I know a lot of people order these. You get them bare root and that's totally fine to do it that way. I gotta say, I'm pretty elated that I don't even have to worry about potting this up. That makes me so happy. I was all prepared to go out into the growth space and get my aeroid mix out and start potting things up, but I don't think I'm going to have to. Not right now anyways. I think I'll take this out there though, because it's more humid in the growth space. I have some of the nicest foliage. The veining is so dramatic and look at the way it shifts with the sheen and that shine. Stunning plant. You know, I <laughs> just realized that this is a pretty special plant. I chose to sit on the floor with my dog. Sit on the floor with my dog who already abandoned me and probably took it too casual. I don't think I did this plant justice. But here we are, that's all right. An absolute beauty. Sean, if you're watching this, thank you. Gotta say, he really knows how to package up some plants. That is, it always amuses me is that the plant people will oftentimes send things packaged 10 times better than any nursery. We're in the business of selling them. But yeah, it's different when you're doing it on a daily basis, you're doing it by bulk and I understand that. The hobbyists, it's like, we know <laughs> what the pet peeves we have when it comes to shipping. Can you see the leaf on this sparkling? Is that coming through on camera? Seriously though, do you see that sheen that's in there? It looks like there's actual glitter inside the veining on these leaves. That is so pretty to me. That's it's remarkable that plants can do that. How these characteristics can exist in a plant that are like mesmerizing. So shiny. I, I should probably get off the floor. I've had my 10 minutes. And then hopefully pick back up. Maybe the rain will go away and get some pruning done and some fertilizer laid out into the backyard. If not, and go out in the growth space. We haven't really been out there in a while. Excuse you, what are you doing? There's no kitties up on the kit. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, I slipped up and didn't close the lid to the cookie jar, but that doesn't mean you just get to, Charlie, get your face out of there. It's rude, those are for everybody. You need to share it and get down. You're not supposed to be up there. There you go. Don't look at me like I'm gonna reward you. You didn't do anything special. <sighs> okay, fine, one treat. Positive reinforcement, there you go, enjoy your cookie. Positive reinforcement for getting his face into the cookie jar and eating the cookies. Pumpkin, you want one? 
Want one pumpkin? There you go. I'm sorry for waking you up. I'm so sorry. Don't have to be so mad about it. You just wanted some privacy. You didn't feel like eating on camera. That's fair. Dojo, sweetheart. I accidentally forgot to take the camera off of slow-mo when I started this vlog because I had been filming, like, finishing clips for the spider mite video right before I started filming this. Just briefly, let's enjoy this moment of beauty with Pumpkin and her fluffy fur. Kind of grainy because the lighting was low. I wasn't prepared to film in slow-mo, but absolutely beautiful. Toby. Good morning, Tobes. Sleep well? Hope so. Another day, still raining. Lots of rain. I'm to a nice drizzle, but still not quite safe enough to start taking the camera outside. And it, it's too wet and cool to be doing anything out here anyways. Look at how full the pool is. That might be a problem because, you know, I filled this thing up through the pump out there and uh, the plumbing isn't actually set up yet, so I don't have a way to drain it. I have a hose somewhere. I don't know where it is, but I have a hose that I can hook to that pump to drain it down. But you don't want the water to get up to that edge along the edge of the pool, the grout line essentially, because then the water can end up actually getting back behind underground and that'll push the liner out and that causes a lot of problems. So I'll be keeping an eye on that. Hopefully won't need to put the hose in there and drain it down, but I think I might. It's possible. If I do, not a big deal. Just a matter of finding the, I don't know where the hose is. I, there's lots of hoses around here. It's just a matter of finding the one that fits on that pump. I'll figure it out. Not the end of the world. Hey, pumpkin. I need to do some watering. Big time need to do some watering with everything that's in here. Particularly need to do the watering with the orchids. They're on the dry side. There you go. You just sit yourself down there. Getting ahead of myself. Sometimes things can become a little bit disorganized when you're focusing on the camera and the filming. Why won't this go down? With the orchids, I put enough water in here to do a gentle soak and I add a teeny tiny itty bitty little amount of the liquid sea kelp. They seem to appreciate it and I let them soak for like 15 minutes or so and use as an opportunity to get all the dust and everything off the foliage. It's not super exciting, but that's what I do. And that's not just with the orchids. I'm going to do that with pretty much everything that's up here, the Dracaenas, and then, well, pretty much everything up here is orchids. There's a begonia, and then the Gloriosum, the Crystallinum. It's still, I don't know, I should probably actually give that some watering. I know I had mentioned that I was going to put that out in the growth space, but it's going to be really chilly for the next few days. Like, the low tomorrow night's 28 degrees. That's too cold. I don't want to take it outside. Even in the growth space, like, I'm keeping it cool in there. I think that'd just be too much of a shock for the plant, right? So I figure I'll just wait a couple days and then I'll take it out there. We'll probably be happier when it's in the upper 60s and 70s out there. Right now, it's too cool. I don't want to put it through that stress. It's just going to have to hang out here for a few days. Not a big deal. No action from the artichokes yet. At least I don't think there is. Not seeing anything in there. I could probably moisten this just a smidge more. When there's condensation on the top, which there is, then I usually don't fuss with making sure to add more water, but that's still, it's pretty light layer condensation. Give it a couple more days. If I'm still not seeing anything, then I'll add just a tiny bit more water and spray the surface. I had my finger in there and it felt okay. It didn't feel very dry. Hopefully sometime in the next week, I'll start to see some action going on there. Those will pop up some little sprouts. Here's round one, <laughs> just three plants. I usually start with the bigger plants and then work my way back with the smaller ones in between each. I drain it down and then fill it back up and put fresh nutrients. And then I had the Spanish moss right here. Does it want to focus? There we go. And this the, as a top dressing on that Gloriosum just to help hold in some moisture, which I know isn't typically something you would want to do with an, an almost hidden orchid with the philodendron. But the air this winter was just really dry, particularly in February, just the heater was running at like 
maximum, full throttle because it got so cold. It seemed to appreciate it. This is a live Spanish moss though, so I need to like actually stretch that out, let it dry a little bit. Because the Spanish moss likes to dry out, it's not a type of epiphyte that wants to be super damp. It grows in areas with lots of humidity underneath the canopy of a tree or within the canopy of a tree good airflow and some protection from the downpour, so it does rain a ton in the south. This is all really a long way of saying that I have found that this actually pairs well as a top dressing because it doesn't need a ton of water, kind of like the philodendron, and I just give it a little dip, and then I make sure to rotate it so that it gets some even moisture. I wouldn't say that this is a long-term thing to do, but it's been kind of nice to look at, and the philodendron seem to appreciate it. Roots are starting to green up. I can go ahead and pull this out. The Cattleya orchids, I don't normally do soaks with, but I have been since I noticed all this new root growth down here below at the base, and it has a new cane starting to shoot up there. When they're doing their thing, putting out new roots and some new growth, that's generally when it's a good idea to water them more frequently, so I'm just trying to stay on top of that, especially because it has buds on it. Oh, can't wait to see those open. And I just pull these out. These were not the plants to be demonstrating this with. Every <laughs> every single plant that's in here is very top heavy and wonky. Yep, so that one's going to drain. I'll lift the drain out from down here. And I'll rinse and repeat. And then if I notice anything with a plant where it looks like it may be sick, have some sort of infestation, any type of disease, then obviously that was a gross sound. Then it's not, I don't, mix those together. Typically I would just remove those from any area where I have a lot of plants in general, just to be safe. And that's pretty exciting. First new shoot starting to come up out of the Gloriosum. Finally, you took your sweet time. This is its newest growth on it. When it arrived, this was still down in there and curled up and hadn't opened yet. And within about a week or two, popped open. And it hasn't really done much of anything since, but it's also, it's been pretty chilly over here. This window stays pretty cool. And I let the moss dry back out before I put it back on top of the the bark, the soil back there. I'm having trouble talking this morning. I'm still waking up. And get all the water out of the bottom of that orchid pot. That's the problem with the attached drainage dishes. Sometimes they can be trouble. Not everything actually needs a soak. So some of the fowls that are in straight sphagum moss, like these back here that don't have any bark mixing with them, those I'll normally just let the water run through them. But with all of them, I put them in the sink and let the water run through them gently to make sure that the moisture goes through the top and then can come in through the bottom while they sit there and soak. Yeah, I don't soak everything. That would take so long. I usually only soak the plants that don't actually need as much water or get watered as often, like the Cattleyas, the Gloriosum, those plants. Or thirsty plants like this Syngonium here. I am constantly watering. Those, I, I'm not gonna soak a plant two or three times a week. That's too much work. Not for me, no thank you. This is a good time to go ahead and do the watering for the reasons I'm even doing it, period, because I have the anthurium sitting here, so that's gonna help keep the humidity up over in this space, just, I mean, for like a couple of days. It's not gonna last very long. Helps a lot, though, to get plants nestled up with other plants that have all just been watered, that you have a nice little microclimate. A nice moist bubble for them to hang out in. And there's round two. All done. I didn't get the drain stopper in, so it drained down a little bit, but no big deal. That's a tricky drain stopper. Come on out. Come on. Come on. This isn't the best example of it. You can kind of see there. I love plants where the roots green up when they get watered. One thing about that that's just so satisfying. Oh, I took the seed tray and I put it on top of the, what it, I don't even know what this is called the little tray that goes in here for the self-watering. <laughs> Once these get started, this will be inside here, and then the actual packs of seeds will be sitting on top of that with the wicking thing, the wicking mat. I just figured that'll keep it up off the cold granite. That should help. That way the seeds will be more air temperature instead of counter temperature. You know the stone countertops, they get so cold. Still got blooms going on this one, which I mean, I would hope so. It just started blooming. Not a huge display, but I still like it. I should actually, I think I'm going to do this without the camera because I need to pay attention to what I'm doing. I don't want to bump any buds or anything off of these plants. Drip, 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 and get all that water out of there. I am so grateful that we don't have hard water here. I've seen pictures from other people, and some of you have talked about how when you get water on the leaves of your plants, they leave those hard water stains. It just doesn't sound like an extra thing that I would want to deal with. I'm really glad that I don't have to worry about that. We have pretty good water here in St. Louis. I don't normally have any issues with it with pretty much anything. And the more delicate plants like my Saracenias and the Nepenthes and things like that, that they've always been fine with tap water, which you know is usually a huge no-no with those plants, but never been a problem. At least not so far. Probably shouldn't push my luck, but I don't know. It's been like 20 years. So far, so good. I'm watching you. Don't do it, Charlie. 
Charlie, don't you do it. See him, he's eyeballing that cookie. Uh, I hear you, he's eyeballing that cookie jar. Nope, not right now. Okay, these ones right here. These are from that haul from the Emerald Great Gut. I, I don't remember the name of the seller, but showed them off in a video not long ago. I popped some tiny holes in the bottom of her foils. The reason that I enjoy the foils is because you can give the plant a good drink and it helps hold the water in just for like a small amount of time and it'll slowly drain out, particularly with mixes, like what these are potted up and where they have that water retention gel in them. Once that gets dry, just like with the coconut, you see how it lifts from the edge of the pot. It has to be rehydrated. And then when you have that, I just don't like mixes that lift from the edges like that. I know the key is to just keep them watered so that, that doesn't happen, but you, have, oh, you only have to be off by one day. I don't like things to be that high maintenance. But that foil helps let the water drain out more slowly so it's easier to rehydrate the plant without having to constantly just keep running water through it over and over and over again. Very slowly drain out the bottom there. I still have to, with the foils, you still want to dump them out because there will be some water that collects in the bottom and then you can have some issues with rot. With the foils, I do still like to keep an eye on them. And once they're done draining, I usually still pull them and make sure that there's not water sitting in the bottom just because they're so flexible, water can still pull up under there and cause some problems with rotting. These are the, what are these? These are the angel trumpets. So don't worry, I've been keeping them far away from the pets. This has been a good game. Who's excited about baseball? You can get to go to games this year. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. Hopefully. I have season tickets from 2020. Don't know how they're going to handle those yet, but I think that they're opening it up so that people can sit far away from each other. You know what time it is? It's time to eat again. Do you hear that, buddy? Where's your bowl? Where's your bowl? Oh, never mind. I have your bowl. Don't go look for your bowl. That'll make me I'll feel really bad. Don't do it. Baseball. That has nothing to do with anything. I need to get back to doing plant things. Problem is, I'm kind of low on plant things to do inside. I went out to the grow space and I was like, well, there's, I don't need to do anything out here. Everything's watered and just there. Don't need to do any pruning or anything like that. This door has been so tricky ever since we had that cold snap. Go on. There we go. There we go. I thought it had stopped raining, but nope. It's okay. Rain is good. Oh my gosh. It's really cold. Do a sneak attack. Pumpkin. Hey, hi, how you doing? Well, it's not true. There are some things that need to be done, but it's pretty much all repots with some, which involves soil, which I left out there in the rain. Oops, I got some new shoes. I know, I did, I got another pair last week. Look at, I don't know how that's gonna show on camera. Can you see it? You see that? How about now? But now, look at that, they changed colors. One second ago, oh, look at that, it's pretty, it's purple. And then you turn foot and go, uh-uh. It's blue, full you. I really want to go outside. I've been stuck in here too long. I think pushing day four or five here. Rain is good, but I need to play with my plants. Yeah, I realize that even though there isn't really much to do out here, you could still come out and see the plants. It's been a minute. Everything's just hanging out, doing its thing. There's some damage from when the temperatures were bouncing around between like 39 and 94 over those few days when things were really hectic. Learned some lessons about the space heaters and Brands of thermostats not to invest in ever again. Got a new leaf starting to pop up there on the tie. Cannot find a good angle to get that. Here's the leaf starting to come out there from the tie. That's actually really exciting because, you know, I just repotted this, when was it? Like October? Maybe even September? I don't remember. It was one of the last things I did outside before moving the plants in. And I bumped it up into a really big pot. It lost two leaves, but they were the oldest growths on it, so I didn't freak out about it. And it's finally starting to put on some growth. Usually during the winter time, that tie just throws leaves out left and right and left and right. A Little bit different this year because I kept the temperatures cooler in here, not as warm, things are growing as actively as they usually are. And it just had a new pot. So I'm happy to see that it's like finally starting to accept its new soil and new life and its big pot. And, start to move and grow again. Bugs are starting to become an issue, but nowhere nearly as bad as they usually are this time of year. Just lots of gnats and flying things I just go through with the same spray I talked about in the spider mite video. That pretty much handles it. Uh, I do think it is time to do another treatment with the DE powder. I haven't done one of those in a while. I don't think I even need to water it. It hasn't been that long. That feels like it's right on the cusp of needing water. Oh, and there's a random tomato that popped up back here. Don't know where that came from. Over the weeks, I've just slowly watched it emerge from the soil back there. It's a, somehow a seed got mixed in with one of these pots. Maybe I will see it even has some tiny little 
tomatoes on it. No idea what variety it is. Like scanning the plants, seeing if there's anything that needs an update. No news is good news sometimes. And the mealy bugs are usually the biggest problem out here in the winter. And I'm just, they're here, but just not as bad as usual. That's largely because like I said, I'm keeping the temperatures cooler. So that helps an awful lot. And I've been spraying more than I used to. I've been spraying a ton. Like I would say once a week, I've been going through just, just little, quick sprays with a nice diluted homemade mix onto the backsides of the plants that are usually problematic with the mealybugs. Yeah, so far, it's nowhere near as bad as normal. That was a big one. Get that wiped off of there. It's bird of paradise. It is really enjoying life this winter. They both are. They're both putting on a good amount of growth, enough that it's starting to shade everything that's back over here. Some plants are knocked over. Don't worry about it. I'll pick them up. They got blasted by the hose. These I'll be moving out pretty soon, I think. The white bird of paradise and the orange, I usually move those out when things are still fairly cool outside. I have some nice new flowers and one of the orchids over here. This one has really nice, big, thick blooms. They're really stiff. I don't know the variety. Not a clue what this one's called. It's one of those hypercloned fowls from like, I don't even remember, maybe Lowe's or Home Depot. Yeah, so there's a update with the growth space. It's been better, but considering the shifting temperatures and everything, it's not that bad. You fighting temptation, Toby. You fighting tempt. Oh, it's okay. You're a good boy. You're good. That's good. Buddy didn't finish his food because Buddy's just not one of those dogs that eats all of his food in one sitting. And Toby very much is. <laughs> you were just laying in here staring at that bowl, huh? Buddy, buddy, buddy. Let's not, don't do that. Not right now, not on camera. That's inappropriate. Okay, Toby, you didn't do anything wrong. You're good. It's okay. You're good. I'm proud of him that I come inside and just see him laying there staring at the bowl, but not actually eating it. That's so good. Good boy. Okay, you're good. Toby, stop. what's the problem? I don't understand what's happening here. I came in and said, oh, you're such a good boy. Is it because you think that I knew that you were thinking about eating the food, but you didn't do it. You didn't do it. That's okay. This one lays down to eat his food. Buddy, why are you such a weirdo? I came out here thinking, oh, it stopped raining. It hasn't. It's still misty. Very windy. And it rained so hard. Got lots of dirt splatter up here on that spring arrangement. These guys, I've enjoyed them so much. It's a pretty bunch of flowers. Okay, really? Really? Now it's starting to rain too hard. Finally, I get outside. I just want to use my new snippers. Pruners. Yeah, they cut through old palm fronds. Hey, that wasn't bad. Not going to say it's any better than other pruners that I've had when they were brand new, though. There is that. The main thing with the Falcos is I like that I can replace the blades. This uh, catches really hard to open and close on this though. Like really hard. I think I might need two hands to get that shut. Okay, there we go. I can't really give much of a review when I've only used them one time. I had a pair of Falcos a long time ago and the blade got broken on them. And this was back before it was even really an option to get online and just order a new blade. So like a really long time ago, but now they have all the cleaning accessories and the things you need to keep them sharpened and replace those blades if you need to, or the spring in the middle. So that's good. So I thought I'd give them a shot. Oh, and they were on sale. They were like $20 off. I was going to uh, try and see if I could find some pansies to put into a planter on the front porch, but I think this, I just looked at the radar and that the rain, it's moving right back in. So that's not going to happen. Oh, teddy bear magnolia. Spring winds, I'm gonna leave it there because with the lows being as cold as they're going to be tomorrow night, I figure that means it's going to be more windy. May as well just leave it down. So windmill palm is looking extra glorious with these mild temperatures and all the rain we've been having. Very pretty. Excuse me. Stepped right into the next day. The yuccas got blown over. Everything else is looking pretty good out here. One of the nice things about having those spells with lots of rain that drag on for days and days and days and the temperatures are still pretty cool. The plants, they always fill out, get so lush. You start to start to start to start to signs of new growth start to show from inside the plants to get to see the leaves that have been curled up during the winter time start to lift back up and all the new growth starts popping up from around everything get to see some buds pop out of the shrubbery all really good things rosemary still has some green in there if you remember i wasn't sure what was going to happen here if that was just growth that hadn't died yet from that cold but it looks like it's pretty good still gonna wait until I rotate it and cut it back because it's pretty chilly right now. It's officially first day of spring, the day this video comes out and it's currently 30 degrees. That's okay, it's gonna warm up. I'm not worried about it. Look at how the water's sparkling right there. That's beautiful. Uh, what happened? Did it get too cold? Is that too much cold for you? You're not thirsty, there's no way. I did tuck this back 
underneath the spruce tree here because it was I was concerned that it was going to get way too much water. I think it's still moist, so that's just cold damage. Was it too cold for you? Set this down on the ground last night and threw a bucket over it instead of bringing it in the house like I had planned on doing. Maybe I should have taken it in. This is giving me all the looks and feels of a thirsty plant, but soil doesn't feel like it. So my guess would be that water is just locked up in there and the plant didn't take it up because it's too cool. It's all right. It's like I said, it's going to warm up today and tomorrow and it's supposed to just keep getting warmer and it has some fresh buds that are tucked way, way, way down in the middle. Don't know if you'll even be able to see them. Yeah, you can't really see them, sort of. They're way down in there and that's good. I want those to be down in there because that's where they're going to be the safest during cold snaps like these. And the Gerber daisies can usually take some colds. I'm gonna pull this back out. I set it back up there on the table and pushed it back to where I had it, but I think that it could use some warmth from the sun. And there goes the dog. No action from any of the bulbs yet, but that's kind of to be expected because it's been dark all week. Very cloudy and cold. Yeah, chives are popping up. This is just a random clump of chives that have been over here for like four years. I never picked them. They've just keep growing. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's fine. I really should probably move those though. Even Jenny's are starting to wake up. I was a little bit concerned because they don't usually do this during the winter time here. Usually they stay evergreen or semi evergreen and die back or they'll move into this more of a purpley green color. They're waking up. This is like my harvest pot. I have just a whole bunch of it growing in here and when I need it, I scoop some out and throw it into different planters and arrangements. Some ferns, these I was really worried about, but so far, so good. I didn't do anything to protect them when we had that cold snap, which I probably should have done, but they're looking pretty good. Really good, actually. This is probably the best they've looked after a winter. These are kind of like the creeping jennies. They'll usually stay evergreen to semi evergreen for me during the winter time. And then in the early spring, they'll kind of fizzle out and start to look junky again and then flush out with new growth. But this is the best they've ever looked this time of year. All good things. Seeing buds starting to pop up on Lots of plants. I'm not gonna turn this into a garden tour. There's gonna be one of those coming up pretty soon, probably. Probably going to need to go inside and find that pump or the hose to hook to the pump. That's way too much water. But I don't think we're supposed to have any more rain over the next few days and the pool company is gonna come out and get the plumbing hooked up on here. Once that plumbing's hooked up, it's pretty easy to drain this down and get the water level right. And then the filter will be running and the water will start to clear up. That'll be nice. Oh, there's one thing that I've been really surprised about. You see that? All those little green guys down there. And in here, there's a little bit of green popping through. Maybe even some more. On, no, that's just algae on a rock. Probably it. I doubt there's going to be any more of it to show. I haven't pulled everything back yet. Okay, that's it. That's all I see so far. That is lemon coral sedum, which I planted in here. I've talked about this a few times. I planted lemon, cor lemon coral sedum and the purple heart plants. I alternated those in this garden bed last year. And I did that because usually our winters are mild enough that the, uh, at least the purple heart plant will come back most years. If you haven't planted a nice warm spot, this is near some warm pavement and then have the house back there to help reflect heat over onto things. So I figured that that would be worth a shot. Try and plant it as a perennial, but I didn't think the lemon coral sedum would come back because it that's a zone seven. And I am right on the cusp of zone seven, but after the winter we had, I just assumed that that was gonna die, but there it is. Didn't have any kind of protection on it. There's this like cluster of dried up palm fronds that are covering up the top of that area, but that's it. I'll be interested to see how that rebounds and does because some plants, even if they make it through the winter, it doesn't mean that they're going to be nice and full like they were the year before. Like I've had the Alpinia Zaremba, the variegated shell ginger. I've had those survive the winter in the ground, which is extraordinary. They shouldn't survive the winter here. However, the growth you get out of them or that I got out of them the next year was just like dismal. There's no point in even trying to continue to overwinter it. I did and the, I think I got maybe two or three years out of it, but every year the growth, like you barely got anything out of the plant. Lemon coral sedum is a very vigorous sedum. So I doubt that will be the case. And those like actually look like they have some new growth in them. So I, it's not a case of there just being some like leftover pieces of sedum here that haven't fully died off yet because I've been fooled like that before. <laughs> it looks like as long as I can keep those pieces intact, they should root back down because I, I can't, I don't know if the roots are still alive or they're just leftover growths that have started to kind of 
get going again. I don't know, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm interested to see what happens there. At the Magnolia set back upright, still has some winter damage on it. Not too bad, what am I doing? I said I wasn't gonna do it. This isn't a garden tour, stop it. Wonder what that is. This right here, should I save the proper tag? Oh yeah, the Peltandra virgin, that's a, a type of um, aeroid. Cool looking plant, a common pond plant. They get big arrow shaped leaves on them. I planted those in this pot last year with that creeping Jenny. I wanted something perennial to go in there instead of putting like the papyrus and it's like it's usually what's in there. Fish are good. They're pretty shy. They're normally shy in the springtime whenever I've had fish outside. It's like they will forget who I am during the winter. And then it's not until it becomes time to start feeding them again on a regular basis that they go, oh yeah, you're the one that brings me food. I haven't been feeding. It's still really cold. They're just swimming around munching on whatever's in there. Lots of plant life. They're not going to be hungry. They're not even awake enough probably to be that concerned with food. <sighs> Look at, God, that's so pretty. I know it's probably bugging some people that haven't cut those dead fronds off yet. I figured just because this is the one that had, this is a mule palm, that suffered a good amount of cold damage because I really pushed it to see how much it could take and discovered 13 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll never do that again. I usually bring these in at 15 and I let it go a little bit colder this year. Well, you can see how that worked out for it. But this is how we learn things, that's okay. But I've left these on here because it's still, it's a super windy time of year, as you can see right now, very windy. And I figured that those dead fronds, even though they're not very attractive, they are still providing some protection for the much more delicate growth that's coming out from the middle. Not a lot, just a little bit. But in a few weeks, the things will be more mild and I'll get those pruned off. The main thing is I want it to get some of that new growth pushed out and more mature and uh, sturdy so it can handle the wind and the fluctuating temperatures we're going to have. Then I'll cut those off because I'm, I'm tired of looking at them too. At the very least, I'll probably come out here and try and cut this floppy piece off. That doesn't need to be there. It's amazing how plants work, right? The fluctuating temperatures seem to be just as damaging as prolonged cold, prolonged excessive heat there in that growth space when we had those ups and downs where it was going for like I said before it's like 38 39 all the way up to 94 that only went on for a couple of days I realized there was something wrong with my sensors my thermostats thought I fixed it turned out I didn't so it happened again another day it causes a lot of damage my areca palms the three of the trunks had spear pull on them which is pretty unusual but I can only assume that that's from that huge up and down and up and down and up and down with those temperatures that can stress things out and if it's falling into freezing temperatures which it wasn't in the growth space never got down to freezing temperatures but that can lead to bacterial and fungal all types of nasty growth forming inside the crowns of the plant freezing and thawing freezing and thawing having things more stable is always ideal is looking here to see if the buds are swelling on this Japanese maple and they are which is great kind of hard to see it on camera but this is a good sign I was a little bit worried about this Japanese maple if that winter that we had but it's looking good right now I should bring the fly trap out here to get a little bit more light and probably appreciate that they like a good amount of sun. I did want to circle back to a couple things I had said before. With the fly trap, I had mentioned that I was going to drop it under glass. That was just for like a couple days in the house. I typically don't have the best luck with them if they're underneath a bell or a cloak that doesn't have some sort of air circulation. If you think about where these come from, they come from really big flat areas where there's a good amount of airflow typically. So I, just, I don't know, it's just never really worked out for me. Done better for me before when I put them in like a glass bowl that had an open top. Typically though, I grow these outside and have better luck with them that way. And this is not a plant that I will be using tap water on. That was the other thing. I had mentioned with some Mycericinias, the pitcher plants, Nepenthes, those two, that I have always used tap water on them. There's more to that that I should elaborate on. I grow them outside, so they mostly get rainwater, and on rare occasions, they get some water from the hose, but not much. If they don't like minerals and lots of buildup, anything like that in their soil. They need a low TDS and chlorine and fluoride, chloramines. All those things can be problematic. I've just been lucky and really pushed it and I shouldn't do that. I wanted to make sure that I made that disclaimer because one, people will eat me alive in the comments section and I'm not in the mood for that. And I don't want to mislead anybody to have you thinking that you should use tap water. I've just, I've been bad and haven't been doing things whether you're supposed to. And somehow I've been getting away with it. The Saracenias, it's not really that surprising. They, depending on what kind you're growing, I usually only grow the ones that are for temperate climates that can take a lot of cold, good amount of heat, and they go into bog planters normally that I put in my pond. I used to have an entire bog garden 
and that's when they got most of the tap water because they would get overspray from the sprinklers. Not a lot, but still probably more than they should. And they did okay. Don't know why or how, but they did. But well, the tap water here does have a pretty low TDS. Like I was saying, have pretty good tap water, but it still has minerals and things in it. So this will be watered with filtered water and it will be going into a bog planter at some point. I know I mentioned that it's cold and then I brought this outside. It shouldn't be a problem. Usually these can take some cold, sometimes even appreciate it. In the sun, it's been like 10 minutes since I said that's already warmed up several degrees, but still should be fine. Not too worried about it. The temperatures should be up in the grow space here in a like a day or so now that we're going to start trending warmer. It, the way I have things set up with the heaters, if you're keeping things roughly 20 degrees warmer than whatever it is outside, because we're not getting cold enough this time of year to need to run all the different heaters. They just dry the air out, make things much more complicated with the plants. I would rather have it be uh, more cool and mild than have to mess with the constant watering. But both ways, whether it's hot or cold, they come with their own caveats. Like when it's cold, like I was mentioning with this, it can be harder to tell if the soil's dry because it's cold and sometimes cold soil feels wet. You know what I mean? Hot in the growth space have to water much more often, but when it's cool, it can be harder to tell when it's appropriate to water because if you water at the wrong time, then you can rot the plants and kill them. Anyways, yeah, I think that in a day or so, I'll be able to get the anthurium out there and anthurium, <laughs> the anthurium. It should be much happier, much more moist out there. I think that's going to do it. I wanted to get a bunch of spring stuff done in this video, but it's just going to have to wait. It's too cold right now and I got to run. I have a thing I need to do down in southern the southern part of the state and it's going to take up most of the day. All right, thanks for hanging out while I go a little bit nutty in the house being trapped. I think you could be used to that after this whole year of COVID not being able to go anywhere but I think that plus just no sunshine for nearly a week straight. Uh, it was almost too much for me. It was nice for a few days. It was pretty relaxing but by like yesterday I was starting to really get antsy and wanted to get out here. It's missed feeling the sun on my skin. Even in the middle of winter when it's like 20 or 15 degrees outside, I still get out here almost every day just to get some sun and, you know, walk around, look at things, see the birds, play with the dogs. Can't really do that with the rain, at least not for as long. You don't get the sun either. The Angelina held up really well. This is a similar sedum to the lemon coral sedum, but much more cold hardy. Not as vibrant or vigorous, but clearly very hardy. Lemon ball is another good option if you want something that's... Why am I doing this? Okay, I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Looking forward to a fun week of having some sunshine, getting to come out here and do some yard work. I was thinking about cutting these hydrangea flowers off and spray painting them. I thought that might look pretty with like some spring colors to put them in a vase. So I need to do some cutting on the paniculatas anyways. Look at that. It's definitely time to do that. Never a shortage of activities. Hope y'all are doing well. Comment down below, how's everybody doing? Happy first day of spring, or whenever you're watching this, happy whatever day it is for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.